So a win at the weekend against Burnley that left Leeds United fans all wanting a big hug from Marcelo Bielsa. Now attention turns to London and the third round of the FA Cup against West Ham. This is the warm up. Coming up for you on the show this week. So you have to scream all around even when your mate is only two metres from you. It was a dodgy white suit, yeah. Whoever was responsible, David James. You know, I went up to Leeds earlier on in the season and they're a fantastic support, one of the best in the Premier League. So welcome to this week's show. Alongside me, Leeds United legend Dominic Matteo is here. It's true. Full name me as well. I full name, name me. Brilliant. When I, when I use the word legend as well, it has yeah. to be the, has to be full, the full thing that you put on your envelopes and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, this week's show is brought to you in partnership with NordVPN, the world's leading VPN provider. There is a special offer uh, for Leeds United fans on the screen for you right now. So, Dom, let's get down to business. We'll talk West Ham. We'll talk the FA Cup third round. But first, we need to talk about that win against Burnley. Ellen Road was absolutely rocking. It really was, and to be honest, I thought the performance was brilliant as well. I know Burnley got back into it with a great goal. What? Well, let's be honest, I mean, could the keeper done a bit better? Maybe, but the performance was, was just excellent. All over the football field, everyone put a shift in. And obviously, for me, the energy levels of the players seem to come back. And I, I think it's been missing a little bit. And I know we've had some di difficult fixtures and some difficult games. So for me, it felt like it was a winnable game, which it was and obviously the performance was absolutely outstanding and I was so pleased for the lads as well because they'd had a couple of, couple of days off, hadn't they? Obviously because they'd been back training because obviously a couple of games cancelled. So it was so important they hit the ground running against Burnley and they did. And I thought all over the football pitch, I thought Marcelo got everything right with his changes. You know, we've seen they got the, we got a goal from the changes and stuff and, you know, Geltart when he came on made such an impact as well. So I think it was one of those days in the office where everything went really well. Apart from the goal, but they're hard to stop, aren't they? Let's be honest, give him some credit as well. Dom, just talk to us about the atmosphere here at Ellen Road oh. this season. I mean, we've talked about it quite a bit, but it's astonishing. You've played in some yeah. unbelievable games here. Look, it was home against Burnley. It wasn't a yeah. Champions League night, but the noise was incredible. And the, the connection, it feels like, between the supporters yeah. and the team, it's, it's unwavering it at is. the moment. And this yeah. is a team that... You yeah. know, at the moment, are, yeah. have been going through a difficult patch at points. Yeah. But there is not one hint no. of, of anything from that from the crowd. It really feels like I, I've never known it as one, really. No, I mean, I'm in a priv privileged position, like many uh, at the ground, to see all the games and listen to what people say and, you know, and the comments they make as well. But to be honest, it's all been really positive. Um, and I think the, the, the fans understood how important this game was, you know, to, to give us a bit of breathing space as well, because... You know, Burnley's a game we'd surely target to win after the results we'd had three defeats after that, before that. So to get them three points was just so massive. And I think the fans realised that. And every game I've been at Ellen Road this year, without that was a massive atmosphere. The atmosphere was unreal. But I think the, the stature that that game was just so huge. And I think the, for me, I didn't see any pressure in the players. They played with that freedom that I'm so used to seeing Leeds last year playing, playing with authority playing with making better decisions on the football. It just seemed to come together and long may that continue. And I, and I think maybe Robin Cock coming back as well was, was a huge, was really important as well because we've missed him. You know, an international player plays for his, you know, playing for his country has come back and, and hit the ground running. And that's all credit to the staff at Leeds United as well. A player who's been out for so long, they hit the ground running straight away. It's amazing. Uh, man of the match for Junior Firpo yeah, was chosen. Yeah. Starting to show what he can offer to the team as well after his move in the summer. Yeah, you're absolutely spot on. And I think with him, I think it suits him playing more as a wing-back than a full-back. I think the def def defense, the defensively, we know he has struggled at times. But maybe in that, in that position, you know, um, as a full-back, as a, an out-and-out wing-back rather than a full-back, I think it suits him better. If he's going to play full-back, then he's got to work on his defending much better. But when you're playing as a, as a wide man, 
as, as, you know, as a wing back, you have more opportunity to get forward and that suits his game. So I think again, that was something that the manager got right. And obviously, Stewie Dallas down the other side was, was the same, but really pleased they got another match. And it's great to see a player who's been through a tough time, there's no two ways about it, um, but he's bounced back. And now, hopefully with the confidence, he, can, he can, can kick on because that's what you need to do as a player. Final thing on the, the Burnley game before we had look ahead to this weekend. Um, amongst the, the madness and the chaos of that third goal going in and the limbs all over the place <laughs> and the stands going crazy, were two men stood by the dugout embracing each other. Marcelo Bielsa with a hug that seemed to last yeah. forever. I, I, I mean, I watched that back. I'm sure lots of people watched that back. I actually, it got me right there because that is. is someone who is in charge of this club that yeah. cares to for that sure. extent that you could see the release, the passion that he's got for, for Leeds United. Most definitely. And I think the, the, the fans and even everyone who knows him, um, they love him, don't they? Let's be honest. And we've seen that in that embrace. It's, that's what you want to see. You know, any, any, any club or any players or team, that you're all, you're all on it together like that. It, may, it meant something. And I think they realise as well how important that game was. You know, because obviously lost the three before that tough game. But then to come back with that kind of performance, I think it was more of relief in a way as well. They know the performance is there. We've got a few players back. And I think that's, we'll, we will see progression within the team. Um, there's no easy games, and we know there's hard games coming up, but that lift of, of three points, and we've seen it from the coaching staff and from Marcelo, amazing. That's what you want. And, and for a fan to see that as well, like you say, I was the same as you. I looked at that and went, wow, these are really in it together, and they stick together, and they work hard together, and then they get the benefits. Um, let's talk FA Cup, third round weekend. That's what we're... Hoping yeah, to replicate exactly. once again. It's That'd been, be nice. It's been a little while. Um, speaking of finals at Wembley and cup finals at Wembley, I was wanting to get maybe one of your FA Cup yeah. memories done, but I can only think of one, and it's a blind, it's a blinding suit. It was a dodgy white suit, yeah. Um, whoever was responsible, David James. Um, yeah, no, I think it was a it was a mistake. At that point, we didn't know what the team was going to be. Um, when it's an FA Cup, we all think you're going to play. Unfortunately, I didn't get chosen. Maybe that's why they didn't win. But, you know, I, I, was, I was so gutted. It just shows you, like, you, as a young player, you wait all that time to get a chance to play in an FA Cup final and you don't get selected, not even to be on the bench. So it was tough. But, um, yeah, it was a bad suit choice. But I think it's an amazing atmosphere to witness something, especially at the old Wembley as well, where you're coming down Wembley Way, you know, and it's just that walk through and it takes you hours to get in. All the fans are all over the place. And it was against Man United. That's what made it even worse because they, they were celebrating with the Cup. We weren't, so we had to go and drown ourselves. It'd be a somewhere. nice white suit, though, to go and with. It was. It. I've still got it. I've still got it, and I will bring it out one day for one of the shows. I'm telling you. Looking ahead to this week, we're going to chat in depth. We've got uh, Robin Cock coming up, who we've spoken to. We're going to chat about Legion United against West Ham. Is there a game you're looking at the fixtures this weekend you think looks a little bit tasty for you? Could uh, go uh, an interesting direction? Um, Man United again. I think they've got, obviously got a difficult game. I think for me, probably. <laughs> only because I know him Stevie G will be looking at that game as well saying I'd love to turn these over because that's what he did you've seen his celebrations against Man United <laughs> they were always special so um, yeah I think that's the one game that, to look out for and I just think that they might nick that as well Villa maybe 5-0 <laughs> do you think? well I usually go for 5 don't I? I'd be happy if they were yeah they, we'll take that we're joined by Nicky from West Ham Fan TV Nicky thanks for coming on mate no problem thank you so much for having me on you beat the Carabao Cup Hoggers Man City on penalties, although unfortunately went out the next round against Spurs. You're into the round of 16 in the Europa League. Just how good have you been this season, Nicky? We've been fantastic, to be honest. We are, you know, it's peaks and troughs when you're a West Ham fan. More, more, more troughs than peaks, unfortunately. But um, yeah, the past couple of years we've been really good, really, really impressed with the, the you know, the, the boys' form. I thought we'd struggle a little bit more than we have this year. Um, with the Europa League and we, we we have got quite a small squad but um, they're just proving us all wrong Moyes he's done a, a fantastic job the, the, you know the level of players that we've got now is he's good uh, they're all playing at their very peak um, and yeah we're quite blessed at the moment I'm sure I'm sure it'll go wrong somewhere along the line but 
Uh, we're just enjoying it at the moment. Is this a season where you should be winning something or winning a trophy? Or is it somewhere where you're just trying to establish your, your position uh, consistently in the Premier League? So maybe pushing for the Champions League spot? I do like a cup run. Um, and, uh, you know, I was, I was quite surprised because I was looking uh, for previews on our channel uh, that we've only faced each other twice in the FA Cup before. And it was nearly 100 years ago, um, right. which, which, is, which is crazy to, to know like, 100 and odd years of the competition. Uh, that we've only faced each other a couple of times. I always think you should target the cups. I know that there's a there's a little bit of a, a tradition now between clubs to sort of treat this as a like a second like a second string sort of competition, which I'm not a big fan of. In terms of resting players, do you think that's something Moyes is going to do? I think he will rest a few. Unfortunately, I do think he'll rest a few. Who I don't know. We have, as I said, we haven't got a massive squad, so anytime we've sort of rested players. We, we haven't got the, the sort of luxury, especially with injuries and stuff in, in our defence, we haven't got the luxury of sort of changing the first 11. So you always get a few sort of first teamers, you know, buzzing around these games, but I'm sure there'll be a few changes. You may see some some of the fringe players like Vlasic, who um, he's been impressive of late, uh, but the one you've got to look out for, and it'll either be him or, or Antonio, um, is Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen's been an absolute fire lately. I know that he'd come from a, some neighbours of yours whole um, and I know you know all about that guy but yeah he's been an absolute fire lately and he, he scored against Leeds earlier on in the season um, but yeah it, he's the player to watch out for he's, he's, he's in real good form at the moment Looking at the game then this weekend mate how do you think the game's going to go and, and can I get a score prediction from you? Uh, I've got to be honest I know I'm, 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 I'm on a Leeds channel but um, I think we'll win it uh, I don't think it'd be easy I don't think it'd be easy at all you know, I went up to Leeds earlier on in the season and they're a fantastic support, one of the best in the Premier League. So I don't think it's going to be easy. The London Stadium uh, makes everything seem loud as well when you're in there. So, you know, more of your fans, the better for you guys. Mm. But I think we will win it. I'm going to plump for a 2-1 uh, to West Ham. Robin, thanks so much for joining us on the warm-up this week. Back in action at the weekend, win over Burnley. It's been a bit frustrating for you. How was it to be out there and uh, playing a full game? Yeah, of course, this um, win for us on, on last weekend was um, so important. We, we knew it was a big game. Um, and yeah, so the three points were really important for us. Robin, um, how was the spirit you know, after a great victory like that against Burnley? You know, a tough opposition. How was it to be back out playing? I know we've just covered that, but I think I thought it was a great performance. Probably one of the best performances I've seen at Ellen Road for a while. And the atmosphere was electric. Did that really help you as, as a team? Yeah, of course. So with, um, with the fans in the stands, um, it's always important for us, especially in those um, important games. And um, yeah, fans pushed us, pushed us um, forwards. And um, I think this is, especially when we play home, um, yeah, big help for, for everyone on the pitch. And um, yeah, it feels good um, to to be back um, with a win. Um, yeah, spirit in the team is good. Um, and now we, we go for the next games. Uh, there must have been a big release at the end. I mean, I saw your picture that you put on uh, Insta and Twitter uh, after the Dan James goal. That was a lovely hug. Lovely cuddle <laughs> that you gave him there, mate. It was very nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, of course. So I think um, with every goal, I remember the... Was it the second, I think, um, in front of the fans and even with some fans? Um, yeah, it's just emotion um, when, you, when you're on the pitch and um, your team scores a goal. And um, yeah, it's just um, emotional in the moments and especially in these games. The one thing I always notice about you as a team, you're all together, you all stick to out together, you fight hard for each other. And we know there's been points this season where things haven't been brilliant. But I tell you what, one thing I've noticed that you guys as a, as a team and as a squad have kept going, kept pushing, trying to improve. You know, we've had a lot of injuries. You've been out for a while as well. So how important is that to be a team, you know, week in, week out? I think this is so important. And um, as you said, we are really close as a team and um, on the pitch every day in training. Um, and I think this is so important for a team. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's great to see um, that we have such a spirit in the team and um, I think this is yeah, in the games and um, also outside, um, 
outside on the pitch um, really important for us. Just from uh, obviously I was uh, I don't know if you know I was an ex defender myself, um, and I always look at the performances of, of the defence. I thought the three of you guys, uh, centre backs as a three as a partnership, were excellent. I thought the communication, considering you haven't played too many times together, I thought the communication was brilliant. And I know myself as being a defender, communication is so important. So. That, that, for me, was the biggest thing I seen, was that communication and the organising, the talking. Seemed great. Did it feel that same, same way for you guys? Yeah, feel, felt the same. So it's um, quite hard with um, with these fans um, in the stadium to communicate on the on the pitch. So you have to scream all around, even when your mate is only two metres from you. But um, no, it feels good on the, on the game. The communication was good. And um, yeah, I think, of course, um, we didn't play it. Um, so often um, together in this um, formation and um, I'm back from longer injury now so it's not um, easy every time when um, yeah, new players are on the, on the field especially in the defence but it worked really well and um, yeah, communication was good as well. Of course attention turns to the FA Cup this weekend. Coming over to England is that a tournament you looked at and thought that's something you want to get stuck into? Yeah, of course. So for me, um, every game is, um, is special and um, in a cup game. So it's um, a knockout game every, every round. And um, I think this is the special thing about the cup. And um, yeah, I'm excited for this game. Uh, behind, I don't know whether you can see behind us, Robin. That's uh, 1972 when Leeds last won the FA Cup. Wouldn't mind a scene like that with you stuck in there at some point towards the end of the season? No pressure. Hopefully we can uh, repeat it this year, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Um, great to speak to you. Thanks so much for taking a bit of time to join us on the warm-up. Good luck for the West Ham game. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye. So Leeds start their FA Cup campaign then against West Ham. It's a, it's a tough draw. And yeah. twice in uh, the space of just over a week with the league game coming up as well. Dom, you know, West Ham are in a great position in the league. They're on the cusp of top four, which is quite incredible. We're halfway yeah. through the, the season now. And if you were in charge there, would you be thinking, right, that's got to be the priority? Or would you be thinking, let's field a strong team for the FA Cup? Let's go on a cup run if we can. Knowing David Moyes a little bit, um, I think he'll want to... Yeah, listen, all managers want to achieve something. Um, I'm sure they'll want to have a good run in the cup. They, um, they've got a proud tradition in the FA Cup as well. Um, not won it for a while, but they got to a final as well. Um, I think they lost to Liverpool, wasn't it? Going back a few years, so yeah, they, they'll want to do well. They just—I think they're on a bit of a, a roll at the minute. The way they're playing and the, the way David Moyes has like structured the team and everyone knowing the jobs inside out. Um, and like you say, we know the physical presence they bring as well. They've got some clever footballers, and you know Lanzini is one that I really like as a player. I think every time he gets on the ball, he looks like he's going to make something happen. Um, and obviously Rice for me, Rolls Royce of a footballer, could play anywhere uh, and, and can play anywhere on the pitch as well. So they've got so much talent, but I think as well with David Moyes, he's always got that defensive side to him as well. So it gives him, I, I think top four for West Ham would be unbelievable. Do I think they'll get that? Probably not, being honest. I think they might be fifth or sixth, but they are a good side and they'll want to get, they'll want to get fourth because they want to improve on, next year, on last year. And that's what David Moyes likes. He's been there with, with Everton. They got to the, into the top four, I think, Everton at some point. So I think it all about be, it's all about progression with Moyes. He wants, he wants improvement. And the one thing I noticed out over the last couple of years under David Moyes is that the players seem like they're willing to put the extra yards in now, which I don't think they were at West Ham before, before that. I think they had some good players, but they weren't getting the best out of him. I think Moyes has got the best out of them. And we're seeing that now. And they're reaping all the rewards of that. So they're a good side. We're halfway through the season from a Leeds perspective. Yeah. 19 points ha halfway through. Yeah. Um, just moved up slightly. There's a little bit of a buffer now to, yeah. to those areas where you don't want to be looking in the table, really. Where do we need to be looking at this fixture? Is it, is it a cup run? Is that... I guess that's what all fans would want. I'm thinking we've had a couple of games postponed over the Christmas period. They're going to go into the fixture calendar yeah. as well. Um, what's the approach here? Well, we've seen some clubs resting players, haven't we? Even in the FA Cup, which I don't agree with. I think you play your best team, especially in the FA Cup. Um, no disrespect to the Carabao. I think there's just something special about the FA Cup. Um, so I'd play my strongest side. I'd want to try and win it. That's the way I've always approached it when I've played. And I've been, been involved with teams that we didn't go for it. And I wish we had, even at my time at Leeds. I think we lost in the quarterfinals to Sheffield United. Um, I was injured. 
I probably should have played. I think I think they thought we might have got through that game. So for me, I think it would be massive for the club to get a run in the FA Cup, and I think it would really give. I don't know. I think it's 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 something we could win. I, I do believe that. We know the the big the big four or five clubs out there, but why can't we? we it's about time we point we had a run in the FA Cup and give the fans something to to maybe celebrate as well. It's happening. It's I can feel. So. I can feel it now. It's mm-hmm. definitely happening. Okay, it's it's a massive game. Uh, what's your prediction for uh, for this week? I I would take any win, obviously, but um, I think I, I just hope we maximise our potential in the team that we pick that he chooses to play, um, and obviously we know the physical presence that West Ham will have. So I I just think we've got to defend well, really well, um, and if we defend really well, I think we can get somewhere out of the game. Okay. Not going to press you on a score on a score line then. We'll just we'll just we'll just leave it there unless you want to. I'll go for two one for a change. <laughs> All right, uh, two one to Leeds. We'll Leeds eyes. Yeah. We'll definitely take that and go back the next week uh, feeling very happy and very confident. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, Leeds United taking on West Ham in the FA Cup third round. Uh, of course, you can follow the action on LUTV. Your commentary team: Bryn Law and Tony Dorigo. Enjoy the game. <laughs>